Hello loved ones and welcome to day one of Adopted. Thank you so much for being here and thank you for the honor of being able to walk you through this process. It's such an amazing one. You know, every time um, the Lord prepares me to teach something, He always opens up new revelation for it in my life and I just love Him for doing that. I got such great revelation in preparation for this class and just recently you know he had been giving me information like earlier when he first said go ahead and take this class because there are so many people who are lost and they don't know where they belong and then as I got closer I'm starting to get weepy already goodness as I start getting closer to time to teach the course of course he just started pouring out pouring out pouring out it's such a beautiful stuff and then of course every time you get the revelation your life changes a little bit and it makes everything, you know, better for you. It gives you more power for the kingdom and for everyday living. And it's just an awesome thing. So I just pray over you right now that you will be so blessed in this course that your lives will never be the same. Like this one will be that one where it's like, you know, the other stuff has, may have been good for you before now. But what you learn right now just like sets you over the top to a place where you will never, ever stop and never, ever look back ever again. All right, so today we're going to start out with the orphan spirit and breaking that, being delivered from that. So first of all, I just want to talk to you a little bit about how we come into agreement with the orphan spirit and how we receive that into our lives and, of course, all the problems that it causes. The orphan spirit is the spirit, it's the exact opposite of the spirit that the Lord wants us to have. The orphan spirit is what came into the earth when Adam and Eve first walked away from the Lord. But the great thing about that um, separation that was caused is that, not that the separation is great, but the great thing about that situation is as soon as they did walk away from the Lord, he already had a plan of redemption in place. He slew an animal and gave them clothing. Why did he do that? Because blood is all about redemption and restoration. There has to be shedding of blood for there to be remission of sins. So as soon as they decided to walk away from the Lord, as soon as they committed that act to doubt him, and to, to believe the lie of the enemy, the Lord already had a plan of restoring them. And then, of course, that's when we know everything about Jesus began to unfold because him um, slaying the animal to give them clothing to put on so that they didn't feel ashamed was um, a type and shadow of Jesus Christ as our sacrificial lamb. So think about that. As soon as Adam and Eve decided to walk away from the Lord, what happens is they lost their spirit of complete communion with the Lord, complete perfection with the Lord, complete acceptance with the Lord, and they chose death. So the orphan spirit is basically, it's, uh, you know, it's attributed to sin. So we receive that spirit or come into agreement with that spirit when we um, choose to sin and do anything that's outside of relationship or outside of the will of God. Okay, so think about that. There are other ways that we can receive the orphan spirit. We can receive the orphan spirit by, um, you know, in the family that we're raised in. If we don't grow up in a family that's loving and kind and nurturing, and they don't explain um, God's will and love and plan and desire for us, we still adopt that orphan spirit. And the reason for it is because the, the spirit of adoption is connected to being in relationship with God. And therefore, it's a lack of knowledge. If you don't have knowledge of God's love for you, God's plan for you, God's destiny for your life, you're not going to have that spirit of adoption. You actually have to have understanding. You have to have knowledge of it in order to be able to receive that. Whatever you have knowledge of, that's what you come into agreement with. Whatever you don't have knowledge of, that's what you come into agreement with. That's what our father's saying when he says, my people perish for lack of knowledge. We have to learn. We have to learn to do well and you know be willing and obedient so we can eat the good of the land. Okay, the orphan spirit also comes to us um, through generational curses. So sometimes there's sin in, that comes down from generations. Like right now with all this Ferguson stuff going on, it makes me think way back to slavery and things like that. Okay, well, of course the orphan spirit entered into um, African Americans because they were first ripped from their native land. So that's one way that that orphan spirit entered. They were also ripped from their parents and from their family units. That's another way that orphan spirit entered. So it's basically getting piled on top of and on top of and on top of it. And then when you look at all the stuff that's going on, all this racial fighting and tension and things like that that are going on, um, African Americans don't know how to respond appropriately because they still don't know who they are. 
um, that orphan spirit is something that's plagued the African American community for generations. And that's something that, you know, my heart is burning and desiring for us to know who we are in Christ. Because if we know that we are accepted by God, it's a lot easier to understand and to, you know, receive acceptance from other people. And we're not looking for it in the wrong ways and in the wrong places. You know, that orphan spirit, that's that spirit that causes, um, girls to go look, um, to men to be their protector, to be their, um, you know, their covering, their rescuer, their deliverer, and end up giving them their bodies and things like that way too young and way too early because they don't know who they are in God. That orphan spirit is the one that, you know, will cause that man, he's out, you know, not having a great time with his wife at home. So he goes and he's having a conversation with some other woman and ends up going home with her, that type of stuff. That orphan spirit causes us to do so many things, you know, that we're trying to figure out why in the world would I do this? And it's because we don't have proper understanding of who we are. But when we do understand how we've been adopted by the Lord, and then we walk in that adoption, we have victory, like amazing victory, and we can experience amazing levels of deliverance because of it. Okay. So another way that we um, pick up that spirit of orphanhood is if we don't know where to place our worship you know worship is such an important thing it's because that's what we cre we were created to do so when we're placing our focus on other things like um like there's so many people who they make their children their main focus of everything where they make their career you know that's the big one they make their career the focus of everything if you don't know how to per purposefully align your worship in the right spot you're going to receive that spirit of orphanhood and the reason for that is because if your worship is not going to the Lord he's not going to envelop you as a son or daughter the way he's intended to because you're not coming to him as a child you're taking that love and that desire for um, parent type relationship but with the creator to and giving it to an idol basically and so those are the types of things that bring on the orphan spirit so just to recap the things that bring on the orphan spirit any type of sin any type of walking away from the lord is going to give you you know some degree of the orphan spirit and the reason for it is because he created us we're supposed to be in sync with him that is his will that is his plan anytime we step out of that then you know it's like the same thing as like you think about the relationship with your parents if you are you know you have their protection you have their provision and their support and everything but then as soon as you decide to go your own way you know, a lot of parents, you know, they have said this before. If you're not going to follow my rules, you can't live in my house. It's that type of thing. Same type of picture. You know, when you step away from God in any way, it's the same situation. He's saying, look, you know, if you if you if you don't want to respect me as a, a you know, as your heavenly father and allow me to be what I know you need, then, you know, you're, you're looking for somebody else to take my place and then you end up being an orphan, end up behaving like an orphan, and that's where you get in, tr get in trouble. Behaving like an orphan has you, like I said, looking to the wrong source for the things that you need for those inner things as well as those outer things. You know, you don't want to get caught up in that spirit at all. And unfortunately, just because of the way our society is, like we seem to be stepping so far away from family and family units and things like that, it seems to be more and more common all the time that, you know, kids are just, you know, the, as the generations come up, they're out of control because they don't know who they are. Okay, so walking away from God, any type of sin is the number one reason you're going to get into agreement with an orphan spirit. Another thing, um, growing up with your parents, if your parents aren't communicating to you who God is, his love for you, his desire for you, his hope for you, you're going to end up with an orphan, orphan spirit because your natural self is going to be saying, why am I here? You know, what is the purpose of this life? I'm going to be striving. I'm going to have to suffer. I'm going to have to do this. Why? Why should I have to go through all of that? Well, if you know who you are in God, when those things come, you know how to respond to them. You know, if your parents have not instilled to you how much the Lord loves you, how much um, he's already thought about you and planned for you and all of those things, you know, that's going to be a problem for you. It's going to cause problems in your life. Again, all of these things that I'm saying, you can see them in the current generations right now. But the great thing about the Lord is that he's already um, pulling out deliverers for these younger generations who are coming up and they don't know who they are. You know, there are people like myself and others who are out there teaching 
and helping our generations learn who we are, discover who we are so that we can, you know, move in right alongside the younger generations and then go for those billion souls to be saved before Christ returns. Okay, so any type of sin and walking away from the Lord gives you the orphan spirit. Um, growing up with parents who don't communicate and instill the love of God, the knowledge God has of you and your life and your destiny and your plan will give you the orphan spirit. Um, lack of knowledge will lead to the orphan spirit. Uh, generational curses lead to the orphan spirit and your uh, worship being misdirected will lead to the orphan spirit. And of course, there are probably other things that lead to it as well, but these are um, the things that uh, the Lord and I were really talking about and discussing. And of course, there are going to be biblical exam examples for all of these. Like one I can think of immediately is um, David. Do you remember that when he was sent to his brothers when they were out at the battlefield and he ended up fighting Goliath? But his brothers, um, his oldest brother, Eliab, I think is his name, was saying, you know, why are you out here? I know the deceit of your heart. You just want to see the battle. You know, it's that's your immature desire to know what's going on and your nosiness and, your, and you want to be able to gossip and stuff like that. That's why you came out here. So those types of things, like that type of rejection from somebody in your family or somebody that you expect to give you unconditional love, those things bring on that orphan spirit. You know, and it doesn't just have to be from your parents. It could be from a sibling like it was in his case you know but then David experienced that spirit again because Saul took him in as his father but then when the anointing of the Lord was starting to dissipate in Saul's life and then he was sent spirits that were tormenting him then he wanted to kill David the spirit of jealousy came on him and he wanted to kill David because he was threatened by David's anointing that type of thing will bring the orphan spirit as well because you know he had been moved out of his family taken into the king's house and the king had received him as a son and then the king started rejecting him so like a lot of uh, rejection it's horrible it will bring on that orphan spirit very quickly very easily that's why it's so important to um, like if you have kids if you work with kids and when you do have kids, just like look in their eyes. You can see very easily, you know, how they're feeling. Like they show all of their emotion on their faces because they don't know how to articulate it most of the time. But you can see everything in their faces and they will like the things that you say to them, they'll their faces will respond immediately. And you'll know that they're feeling that rejection and you need to fix it right away. You know, you need to apologize, say, I'm sorry, I didn't, you know, I didn't mean to hurt you. Do you understand what I was saying? And just smooth those things out because they're so sensitive. And, you know, the, the enemy, of course, wants to get them when they're young because then he's got a longer period of time to cause problems. And I'm just speaking to all of, I mean, to about all of this from personal experience. You have to know the Lord has done a work in me. Let me tell you. Okay, so um, families and things like that will cause those spirits. Think about Abraham. You may not have um, necessarily associated Abraham with having an orphan spirit, but he was called out of his family, out of Ur, um, to, to go roam and be in communion and relationship with the Lord so that the Lord could raise up a chosen people. So the way the orphan spirit would have come in there is, you have to think about it. Abraham, he did some things that evidence that he had coming to agree with the orphan spirit but the thing is like being pulled out of your family for whatever reason will bring the orphan spirit even though he was called out by the lord there were still some things that he walked in the natural with you know as opposed to you know staying in the spirit the whole time and we do that we're human we cannot unfortunately i don't think walk in the spirit 100 percent of the time you know we do make mistakes we do follow our natural instincts and follow what our eyes see every once in a while and we have the 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 chance the risk of bringing that orphan spirit into agreement with our lives and then we end up doing things you know like um abraham and sarah did were trying to make the promise of a child happen on their own you know that happens like if you if you don't keep in mind how much the Lord has um, already made available for you, already done for you, it's easier to make those types of mistakes and walk outside of his will and walk outside of his plan. But we're hoping and desiring that we will be so anointed, so delivered, so healed, so touched that that spirit cannot have any type of authority over our lives ever ever again and that from this moment forward we're walking into great victory okay so 
you may have been walking like in gravel for a little while, which there are a lot of people out there in the world today that are walking on a path of gravel. And I'm sorry that that's happening. You know, I've been on that path and I'm so glad that I'm walking on pavement now. But understanding the spirit of adoption, receiving it, agreeing with it, and just letting it penetrate your entire being will have you not only moving from gravel to paved path, but it will have you walking on streets of gold. And I know because I, I'm just getting great revelation of this over the summer, but I'm already starting to walk into the greatness of it with the Lord. And it's amazing. And I want that for you as well. So that's our goal for the end of this week. If you're on gravel or even if you're on on paved path because you've gone through some levels, levels of deliverance already, we're trying to get to streets of gold. That's where we're going by the end of this week. And we're going to do it in Jesus' name. So what we're going to do right now is we're just going to get into his presence and we're going to worship him and we are going to break that spirit of orphanhood off of us completely, permanently, forever. So just come into agreement with me in worship with the Lord because he said if two or more of us join together in Jesus name, he is in our midst. And so we just invite him in. We just invite the Lord in and we're just asking for big deliverance. So just come into agreement with me and invite the Lord. Jesus, you said that you would come if we're joined together. There's no time or distance in the spirit. And we just invite you to come. We just invite you to come. We just invite you to come. We invite you to come, Lord. We just love you. And we desire so deeply to know you and to understand you and to serve you and to bless you. And to be in the deepest, deepest intimate relationship with you. So Lord, we just confess right now that we have come into agreement with the spirit of, of orphanhood. We've received that spirit. We've acted in it. We've responded to life as orphans. And we confess that to you right now. That is contrary to the will of God. So we reject it. And we repent. We apply the blood of Jesus over that spirit of orphanhood right now and we nail it to the cross of Christ. And we decree that by Christ's shed blood that we are no longer in agreement with that spirit. We speak to the spirit of orphanhood right now and we apply the blood of Jesus against you. We bind you and cast you out and away from our lives. We submit to God. We resist you and we command you to flee now. Go. You have to go. You have to go. You cannot be here. You cannot be here. We're laying you at the cross and you can no longer work actively in our lives from this moment forward. You are gone. You are cast out. You have been knocked over by the blood of Jesus and you will never return. Whom the sun sets free is free indeed. And I just decree right now that we are free we are the righteousness of God in Christ. The enemy can no longer use those things to accuse us. You can no longer call us orphans. You can no longer make us behave as orphans because we are free. I take the blood and I use it to seal it. Okay, I'm going to let you go right there. I don't know how much you saw. I looked up. I was praying and just in the spirit and I looked up and the video had stopped recording. I apologize to you for that. But um, I'm just going to reiterate the, the word that the Lord gave me for us is that he said um, that his heart is for us. And I'm sorry, I forget what he said before that, but he was just talking about how much he loved us. And um, I hope you heard about the vision that's, that I saw. One was of the soul and you know how those Instagram pictures are, um, you know, they have the, the different like the collage, but it was like triangle pieces and the Holy Spirit's light was shining in and making things new and making things better and beautiful and then I also saw a vision of somebody holding a baby and somebody else walking up and taking the baby from their arms and that's a picture of the spirit of adoption so the Holy Spirit was present to heal and deliver and do all kinds of great things for us and um, I wanted you to just stay in his presence you know turn your video off just stay in his presence and let him just wash over you and speak to you and do whatever you want and one assignment that I would have for you is um just have a conversation with him and talk to him, Lord, what in my life has caused me to act, you know, you know, in certain ways, what kind of behaviors do I, behaviors do I exhibit because of that orphan spirit? Have him identify those things for you.